Hallelujah, the everlasting Father. 
uh, acknowledge my friend Titus back there in the corner. Uh, the Lord has moved upon his heart. We've talked. Praise the Lord. And Titus, I don't have money. I don't have gold. I don't have anything to give you. But such as I have, give I to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray peace into your life. I'm going to take a moment right now. I'm going to speak the word of God into your life. If that's okay. In the name of Jesus, I pray right now. Oh, hallelujah. The bondage that you have that is suppressing you right now, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. I pray right now that the fire of the Holy Ghost would rest upon you, that you would know that it is Jesus that is dealing with your heart. I speak liberty right now into your life. I speak, I speak freedom right now into your life. I speak the power of the Holy Ghost.
Spirit, God, that you would run every soul that is here, Lord, that you would move upon every heart, Lord. You know the time and the prayers that's going in. Lord, I pray right now that you bring it to your listening. Lord, you see the desire and expectation of the heart and the mind, Lord. I pray that you continue to move right now and liberate, Lord, the soul. Even those that are unable to be here today, I pray for a move of you wherever it is that they're watching from. That you would touch them. That you would uplift them. That you would encourage them in the Holy Ghost. That you would move upon their lives, their hearts, their minds, Lord. That you would stir them, Lord, unto righteousness. Stir them unto good words. Stir them, Lord, in the direction of the Spirit, Lord. Move with the power and mind, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you would saturate us with your glory. Come on, church, pray with me right now. Oh, God. Don't worry. 
longer. He wasn't drunken anymore. He was sober at that moment because he knew exactly what had happened to him. The king began to cry out loud to bring the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers. And then the king began to speak and said to these wise men of Babylon, any of you that could read this writing and show me the interpretation that there is in it, will be clothed with scarlet and have a chain of gold about his neck and shall be the third, third ruler of the kingdom. He tried to give them and pacify them and tried to soothe the fear that gripped the whole entire room. Could I tell you that when God shows up on the scene, he begins to draw. He begins to have his way. And there's one or two steps that we can choose to go. We can go with his drawing or we can stand away and run from it. Could I remind you today that the apostle said, why don't you examine yourself? You know what is true. You know what is valuable in your life. If it's the power of God that is drawing you, then why don't you just lift your hands and begin to magnify and worship your Lord and Don't withdraw from him. And so he tried to give them something of this world, the monetary value, to soothe their own fear. Try to, try to conquer it. You know, that's what, what happens. When, when God begins to move in somebody's life, he begins to touch somebody's heart and mind. The devil moves in and tries to cloud a lot of things. Oh, this is, there's no truth in that. Oh, that's just a bunch of malarkey. That's, that's just history in a, in a book, an old book. Could I tell you that the book that I'm reading from is the very essence and the power of the spoken word of your creator that knows the number of hairs that are upon your head, that knows the molecules and the electrons that flow within your body. He created you. You are formed in fashion after the image of his power and might. And within you right resides the capability to in essence hold the power of the almighty God. You have that option. That opportunity then came all the king's wise men. But they could not read the writing. Nor made known to the king the interpretation thereof. Then was King Belshazzar greatly troubled, and his countenance was changed in him, and his lords were, were, were astonished at how, how much his countenance changed. Where am I going to go? What's going to happen now? What, what, what's going to be of me? Oh, I, I don't know where I'm going to go. I, what is plaguing? Uh, maybe you're sitting here today and you're wondering in your mind, you're planted in your mind by the adversary of your soul. Could I tell you right now that there's power in the name of Jesus? Oh, yes. That there's liberty and freedom in the name of Jesus? Oh, that there's healing in the name of Jesus? If you've been touched by the blood of the Lamb, you should stand to your feet and begin to magnify and glorify your Now, when the queen, by reason of words of the king and his lords, came into the banquet house, and the queen spake and said, O king, live forever. Let not thy thoughts trouble thee, nor let thy countenance be changed. There is someone in your king in whom the spirit of the holy God, the holy God, she called it holy God, because she really didn't know either. But she was the mother of this man, and she knew how Nebuchadnezzar got home. So she knew that there was an all-powerful being. Yes. And she began to highlight this holy one, this all-powerful being, in the days of thy father, light, understanding, wisdom, and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods. He, he, this man, he found in him whom King Nebuchadnezzar, thy father, the king, I say, thy father made a master, he made him a master of the musicians, the, uh, the astrologers, the Chaldeans, the soothsayers, for as much as an excellent spirit and knowledge and understanding is it that he can interpret the dreams and showing the hard sentences and dissolving of doubts were found in this same Daniel whom the king has named out to Shazza. Now let Daniel be called, and he will show thee the interpretation of this. Verse 13, then Daniel was brought 
before the king, and the king spake unto Daniel, Art thou that Daniel, which art the children of the captive of Judah, whom the, my, uh, my father the king brought to, out of Jerusalem? And I have heard of thee that the spirit of the gods is in thee, and that the light and understanding and excellence and wisdom is found in thee. And now the wise men and the astrologers, they have been brought in before me that they should read this writing and make it known unto me the interpretation of it. But they could not show the interpretation of the thing. And I have heard of thee that thou uh, canst make interpretation and dissolve the doubts that are here now. If thou canst read this writing, I'm going to give you everything. I'm going to make you third ruler in the kingdom. I'm going to give you all the gold you want. But listen to what Daniel answers back in verse 17. He answers back and said, Oh, great king, let your gifts keep to yourself. I don't want them. When you make the right steps, it doesn't matter what this world can afflict you with. It doesn't, make, it doesn't matter the power that's in this, in this life, the material things of this life. All that matters is I know who the, the Savior is. He said, Thy self, give it, reward somebody else. Yet I, I'm going to read this writing before you. There's no bones about it. I know exactly where you're coming from. For thou, O king, the most high God, gave Nebuchadnezzar, thy father, the kingdom and majesty and glory and honor. And for that majesty, he gave him all the people and nations and languages. And he, and he humbled them and they, they feared him. To, and, and, and they were humbled before him. Whom he would uh, slew, that's who he would slew. He would kill. But those he would desire to keep alive, he, he would keep those alive. But when his heart was lifted up and his mind hardened in pride, he was despised by those that were surrounding him. And they took his kingly robes, they took his glory, and he was driven from the sons of men. And his heart was made unlike the beast, and he was dwelling in the wildness of the air. And, they, and he began to feed himself off the grass like oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of the heaven. Until he knew that the Most High God ruled the kingdom of men and that he uh, appointed over everything. He come to his mind, O Belshazzar, your own father, come to his mind and acknowledge the power of God. And he humbled his heart. But listen to what the next step happens. And see, we can have a difference in our lives today than what this people. Because I, I've, I've given you all the foundation, but I, I left out a little keynote here. Because Daniel stepped on the scene and he began to preach the truth. He began to show this man where he's at. But thou, O Belshazzar, you have not humbled your heart. And you knew better. Did I put it that way? You knew better. You lived in a home where there was prayer. You've seen the onslaught of those that come against you, God. You've seen the power of God. You've seen what God can do. You knew there was an almighty deity, and you took what was his out of his house, and you began to sacrifice and worship other gods, thinking that he would have no power over you, that you was caught up in your selfishness, could I break that down to where we're living at right now? There's a lot of people in the world today that are stuck on the next step. What is it that I'm about to take? Oh, God has called me. He's placed a hand in my life. He's given me opportunity to make a difference, to make a change. If I go this way, what's going to happen? And if I go this way, what's going to happen? Could I tell me that's the very word that the apostle Paul begin to tell the Corinthians, you need to examine yourself. You need to take a stop right now and begin to survey the situation. And you need to make it up in your mind whether or not you've got the truth or whether or not it's a surprise. It's, it's, a, it's a, a falsehood. And if it's a falsehood, then you go that way. But if it's the truth of Jesus Christ and Him crucified, then you can stand upon His name and have freedom and victory and liberty and live through this present world, being more than a conqueror over that which could conquer you. Oh, but thou knew. Thou knew the problem that you were facing. Thou knew the problem that you was in and the, the choosing in which you had decided. 
invited to come. Here we are. We're standing at that step, at that opportunity, at that place. I can only imagine as Elisha began to look at the dry and barren ground, that prophet began to look at his servant and said, we've got to have a move of God. We're at a place where we, we can't live anymore. We've got to have a move of God. There, there's nothing to eat. There's nothing to drink. We're just talking about natural living here. I'm not talking about uh, uh, just having the finer things of life. I'm just talking about uh, making it from today to tomorrow. Oh, we got to get a hold of God. And I can imagine that old prophet looked at his servant. Let's have a prayer meeting. And they begin to pray. I believe many of us have had this same time. God, I need a move of you in my life. I don't know where you're at. Somehow I seem to drop off the trail and I've lost you somewhere. And God, I need to get a hold of you. And we begin to grasp for straws. Where are you at, God? And the whole time God's looking, oh, I desire to touch you. I desire to move upon you. I'm going to open your eyes. And so they begin to have a prayer meeting. And God began to move. And so he sends a servant out there. Look, see if there's any remnants coming. Maybe God starts drawing you into a closer walk with him. Maybe you've been on the outskirts. You've been dulling into the things of this material world too much. And he's calling you back. Oh, no, 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 no. Why don't you feast on me? So we begin to pray because we're hungry. We, we're thirsty. We're wanting a move of God in our lives. And so then we begin to pray. And we begin to go out and we begin to look. Oh, can I see the rain coming? Can I see the rain coming? No, it's not coming again. Oh, I've got to get back into some prayer. Maybe I'm going to add a little fasting in that. Maybe I'm going to add a little uh, kid early devotional. Maybe I'm going to do something to change my, my prayer life. I'm going to do something to get a little deeper. And the longer we get to get in, into God and his glory, we begin to survey and our eyes are open. And the, what did the servant say? The size of a man's hand. And I don't know about you, but when God's hand shows up in my life, I know what decision I'm going to make. Ironic about the Old Testament. As a leper would make his way down, he would have 
to say unclean, unclean, unclean. And everybody would get out of his way. It's almost like wearing these masks. Unclean, unclean. And you see everybody standing six feet apart, scared half to death. That's the way it was. That's the way she felt. They would not even want to touch her. They didn't even want to look upon her. Surely this Jesus that is standing there, what's he going to do now? Well, what is this one that says that he can heal everybody and he's even tried to prove it a few times? Raise the dead. What is this going to say? What is this one that's going to look into her eyes and he's proclaiming that I and my father are one? Look upon me and see the Father. You go to me and see the Father. So Jesus looks down upon this sin, the ugliness of her guilt and shame. Everybody would know. And the spotlight begins to shine down from heaven as the hand of God begins to minister to her life. We don't know what the hand of God ministers. Because scripture just simply says he did knelt down and began to take his fingers and begin to draw on the sand. I don't know what he drew in the sand, but it doesn't matter to me because the hand of God showed up in the time that she needed. Could I tell you today that the hand of God has shown? I wish, I wish that Belshazzar could have taken another step, but he was at the end. Judgment had hit his throne. In fact, the very message uh, of the finger said, many, many, take all your parson, meaning you've been weighed in the balances and you've been found wanting. You've gone as far as you could go, buddy. You've done everything and I can't offer you forgiveness anymore. I hate to be a bearer of bad news, but could I tell you, could I tell you that is in the, the world of home right now, that there is a heaven to gain and there is a hell to shun. There is a damnation of the soul. And now you stand at the very step. And I ask you, as the Apostle Paul would ask those of the New Testament church, examine yourselves. Examine where you're at right now. Because I've delivered to you the truth. I've given to you the family fathers. I've given you the gospel of Jesus Christ. I've given everything to you. And if you have questions, you need to get into the realm and the presence of God. And know your faith will make you whole. Belshazzar was in the room of judgment. In fact, Daniel said, tonight, your soul will be required of you. At some point in our lives, all of us are going to face that step. But it depends on where we're standing, on which side of the line we're on. Are we righteous with him? Are we void without him? I know where I'm standing. I'm standing in the presence of God. That where he is, I want to be. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, where he is, I want to seek after him. I want to follow after him. I want to know him. I want to know his word. I desire his I pray, pray, stand with me right now. And close your eyes. I'm ending this. Hallelujah. Because this service is a, a divine appointment. I, I felt it from this morning. Actually, I, I was in prayer Friday. I felt it. A, do, a divine function of the Holy Ghost. There was some planned things that were supposed to go a certain way, and they, they, didn't, they didn't go that way. But God has a divine appointment for you here today. He spoke to a couple of you in a mighty way. Pray that you would act upon your salvation today. And I don't do this for fear. I don't want to scare you. But could I tell you, you need to have a godly fear of what your eternity looks like. You see, today, you're just going to live the beggarly elements of this world. But 
tonight God's hand could show up in your life and say you've been weighed in the balances and I want you back or you've been weighed in the balances and your weight I will cast you'll know you know whether or not I'm in the spirit of God because you're so
and say, Jesus, I stand in your presence. I need a move of your spirit. I pray right now that you would see the heart, the mind, the call, the tug upon the heart, the desire of the mind. I pray for healing now. I pray that you would move in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let's sing this song. Yeah. 